see you tonight. We're glad you're here, and I'm glad to be here. Good to have you all of the visitors with us tonight. We're just pleased that you're here. Good to have Mark back with us tonight. And I'm going to tell you this now, and then I'll tell you again later. Back in the fellowship hall, there's a lot of food. So uh, when Mark gets through, about 8, 8.30, whatever it is. <laughs> then we're going to invite you all back to the fellowship hall to, to share. So, uh, I, like I said, I, I, I warned you, and I'll tell you again later. So. Any announcements you have tonight? You yes. have anything you'd like to share? There are several. I've heard of several prayer requests, and uh, a little bit later on in the service, if, if uh, I'm sure it's okay with everybody, you know, we need to be praying for each other, but... Um, I'm going to request that we have a little special prayer time okay. uh, because we have several in our church and then several other concerns. I'm sure everybody's got some kind of concern somewhere. Okay. So uh, a little bit later on, probably before Mark comes up and speaks, if, if, we, if we could just have like a little prayer, a special prayer time. That would be good. Good for several weeks. You want to do it after Kevin's tea or before? Uh, we can do it after Kevin and Jacob. Oh, okay. Let's go, Lord. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for a beautiful day that you've given to us, the blessings of this day. I thank you for these that have come this way tonight. I thank you for each person and each and every home that's represented. And I pray that you would be with us in this service tonight. I pray for Mark as he comes to bring the message and for his family. I pray for these from other churches that they may be blessed as we have been blessed and that indeed you would revive us, Lord. Use us in your service. Speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit as we gather here tonight. Open our hearts and our minds for the message you have for us now. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join us. And
Let's just remember who the great physician is during these times. Let us pray. Holy God, Holy Father, as we come and prepare to hear this message that Brother Mark has for us this evening, Father, I just want to thank you, and I can speak on behalf of of everybody that's been here and heard these services in some way or another, that we have seen a spiritual revival within this church here. And we just thank you for that, Father. You know, every once in a while, we need a we need our batteries recharged, so to say. So uh, thank you, God, for this for the for these services that you have been in the midst of this week. Thank you for all the music that we have heard. Uh, during this week. Thank you for the messages that you have laid upon uh, Brother Mark's heart. And uh, just pray that you would just be with him tonight as he delivers these messages, these last message to us. And Father, help us to take these messages and these services that we have experienced this week. Help us to not just, when we leave this place today, say, that's it. Help us to carry it outside these walls. And to, to spread this good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we just celebrated the resurrection. We need to celebrate the res resurrection every day that we are, we are breathing. Because we, we have that hope through Christ. Whom you sent here to die on the cross for us. To have this eternal life with you. So Father, just help us to spread this message. Not keep it, in, not, not keep it inside of us. But to spread it throughout. Father, there are many concerns within this church tonight, within our own church family, within the, 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 the people represented here tonight. You've heard so many names. And Father, you know every need and you, you know every concern that is on each of our hearts. So Father, I, we just lift those up to you at this time. And Father, we believe and we know that you are the great physician. You have the final word on on anybody's sickness or illness or surgeries. You have the final word in that. So, Father, we just place these people, place these concerns in your hands. And, Father, we know that you will take care of us. Thank you, God, for loving us so much. Thank you for just, just bestowing all of these blessings on us. We have so many abundant blessings. Father, we, we let this fear, and as Brother Mark has, has talked about, we let this fear control us sometimes. And, and uh, not, you know, we, we have this fear of not stepping out in faith or, or whatever the need may be. But Father, I just, I just pray that, that, that we, as your disciples, would go beyond, uh, get beyond this fear that we, that we have inside of us. That we would just go and be the people that you would have us to be, that you call us to be. Again, I pray for Brother Mark as he brings this message to us. Father, we, we've had a sweet, sweet spirit in this place this week. So I just pray that, that you would just, just bring this message to him and, and, and let, us, let us open our hearts and open our minds, open our ears, Father, as he prepares this message to bring to us. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. I tell you, this has been a true blessing to me. Uh, we've uh, preached revivals in very large churches. We've preached revivals in very small churches. That really never hinders me at all. People say, well, don't you get nervous preaching to hundreds of people? No. I, do you get nervous preaching to six? No. But what I get nervous about is the spirit I find when I get to the church. Yeah. If there is a freedom and the spirit of God is flowing, it doesn't really matter to me. But when you get to a church, whether there's a thousand of them or whether there's six, and you get this, boy, it's hard to preach. It's hard to see hard to do anything. And I, I just want to thank you because this has been easy. Easy preaching. I've probably been revived more than you have. There is a beautiful spirit in this church that just I don't know. It's, I, I told Brother Bill back here, I said, you know, when I came, you never know what to expect. And sometimes when you see older people, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's a little closed. 
But this is a bubbly spirit in here. I mean, it's really bubbly. And, and I have thoroughly enjoyed myself this week. And I thank God for your prayers and, and being who you are and letting God be who He is through you. And I do really mean that. Um, if you got your Bibles tonight, I've got good news, I've got bad news. As uh, soon as I get home, I'm going to send a letter to the bishop because I think what y'all are doing is illegal. Because having food on the last night of revival is just like deer hunting over baited fish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wrong. Because all you're trying to do is get the preacher to be short-winded. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> but it's not as bad a violation. If it was real bad, it would be crock pots with a smell. You know, the sanctuary would be full of what's cooking. I don't smell anything, so it may not be as bad as uh, bad as we think. Um, good news and bad news is, is tonight I'm going to preach the whole New Testament. <laughs> That's the bad news. The good news is we're going to do it in less than 20 minutes. So if you'll just hold on and pray for it. All, uh, all day long I, I've studied and, and prepared um, what God would give me. And all day long God has said no. And He's laid this uh, scripture on my heart. He's laid this message on my heart. And I'm, I'm like, Lord, I've done put in several hours on this. <laughs> you can't do this to me. He said, no, we're going to do this. And so about 15 minutes to 3 this evening, I finally said, okay, not my will, but thy will be done. And so if y'all bear with me, we're going to be reading out of the book of Ezekiel again. The book of Ezekiel in the 47th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. I love reading Ezekiel. A lot of people think Ezekiel is kind of weird. Uh... But I, I probably bear witness with Ezekiel better than I do any of the Old Testament prophets. Ezekiel saw things through visions. He saw things in his mind that other people couldn't see. And sometimes they got a little strange to, to some people. People think and they talk to me about how God shows me this or shows me that. It's not through reading the Scripture. That's strange, I know. But God speaks to me and shows me things and sets me down just like tonight. If I were going to be preaching on the prodigal son in my mind and in the vision that I have, I would be the prodigal son or I would be the father. I would be that person. That's how I see Scripture. It bubbles up inside of me and God shows me that way and then I go to the Bible. It may be strange, but that's the way I do it. I think Ezekiel was like that. I think God showed him things that Sometimes he didn't understand, but they seem so clear to us now. 47th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. This is some of my favorite scripture. 47th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. This is where Ezekiel is having a vision of the temple. And I won't get into all of that, but he picks it up and he says, Then he brought me back. I hear pages always. I want us all to get there. 47th chapter of Ezekiel. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There water was flowing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. And the water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple south of the altar. And then he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around at the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And the water was coming out on the south side, going on eastward with a cord in his hand. The man measured up 1,000 cubits, and then he led me through the water. It was ankle deep. And again he measured 1,000, and he led me through the water, and it was knee deep. And again he measured 1,000, and he led me through the water, and it was up to my waist. And again he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross. For the water had risen, it was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Mortal, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I came back, 
I saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on the one side and on the other. He said unto me, This water flows toward the east, or eastern region and goes down into Arabia. And when it enters into the sea, the, the sea of stagnant waters, the waters will become fresh. Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish. And once these waters reach there, it will become fresh. And everything will live where the river goes. People will stand fishing beside the sea from, and I struggle with these two, Ingledi unto Ingledan Lamb. It was a place for the spreading of the nets. Its fish will be of great many kinds, like the fish of the great sea, but its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for the salt. On the banks and on both sides of the river there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will, will not wither, nor their, neither their fruit fail. But they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water that flows from the sanctuary, the fruit will be the food and their leaves will be for the healing. Amen. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've always loved the Scripture. And I, I don't know, it's always been special to my heart because I can see it. Ezekiel said there was a man and it said that he took him to the temple of God. And he said he began to show him each side of the temple, around about it and on top of it. And he took Ezekiel around to the front of the temple. And Ezekiel, when he looked at the front of the temple, he said there was a river flowing out of the threshold of the temple. It was flowing out from the altar that was in the temple. And he said that, that the water was running out across the threshold, under the threshold of the temple, and it was running down. And he said, I, Ezekiel, saw this. And he said, the man that was with me, he said he took a measuring length and he measured a thousand cubits. And he took me by the hand and he led me out into the water, a thousand cubits. And he said, when I got out there, he said, I was ankle deep. And he said, immediately the man took and he measured a thousand cubits. And he said, he led me out into the water. If y'all remember the, what is it, step into the water, way down a little bit deeper, the old song. He measured a thousand cubits and he said, I, I got out there and he said, it was up to my knees. He said, the man measured a thousand cubits and he said, it was up to my waist. And he said, and again, the man measured a thousand cubits and he said, it was water to swim in. He said, water that I couldn't touch bottom. It was water that could not be crossed. It was a place that I began to panic. If you ever get into deep water sometimes, you especially my wife, if she can't touch bottom, she panics sometimes. So, and I love it, the deeper the better. But I thought to myself that he said he began to watch this river and he come back to the edge of the water there, just in the shallow water, and he began to watch the river. And the, the man asked him, he said, do you understand what you've seen? He said, this water flows out of the altar of God, out of the temple of God, across and under the threshold of God. And he said that everywhere it goes, it brings forth life. He said, where there were no fish, he said, it brings a multitude of fish. He said, where the trees were dead, he said, it brings abundance of trees. He said, the trees would put forth leaves and put forth fruit every month, fresh fruit every month. He said that the men would stand on the side of the banks and they would cast their nets out and bring in abundance of large fish. And he said, everywhere the river goes, it brings life, except for the marshes. He said, those are left for salt. What in the world does this have to do with the New Testament? I'm going to take it just a little bit further. He said, I'm going to tell you that this has everything to do with every one of us. That tonight as we look at, uh, as we look at Ezekiel's experience and what he's seen, I want to tell you about a, a man named Christ that was born. He saw the abundance of God's grace as the angels began to sing as the wise men and, and, and brought all their gifts and, and the shepherds came and they saw Him and the angels sung and the stars and this little baby lying in a manger, it saw the beauty that flowed out of the grace of God. And I want you to know that for several years we didn't hear about Him up until He became a young man a 12, 11, 12, 13 years ago when He was, he was found inside the temple teaching 
See, that was when Jesus Himself stepped out into the waters about ankle deep. And He began to teach the people in the synagogue and in the sanctuary about things. And they began to ask, how in the world does this young boy know all of this? Why can he sit here and have a conversation with us? We find that you know his mother come and got him, and, and he went on, and, and Jesus began to he went up onto the mount, and he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. He was starved for 40 days and for 40 nights. And then in his weakest time, the devil come to him and tempted him by what we see in the Bible by three different things, but surely to goodness there was more than just three. And we find that when Jesus uh, was able to defeat the devil, that Christ stepped out into this water of grace a little bit deeper, and he would come up to his knees. We see that as Jesus began to go on, he'd done a few miracles along the way, and he told his disciples, he said, don't tell anybody. He said, don't tell a soul. He said, my time's not come yet. And as everything that he'd done, he stepped out into the waters a little bit deeper. And then it come to a point at the end of his life that God had asked him to step out into the water that you and I can't cross. He asked him to step across a veil of death that you and I can't get there. Oh, there's been many that have come and claimed to be the Christ. You know, even John the Baptist sent his prophets and asked him, he said, Art thou the Christ? Because many had come in His name claiming to be the one. But the one thing that separated them, when they come to the veil of death, they couldn't swim across it because when they died, honey, their bones were still left there. And when it come to the point that when Jesus got down in the Garden of Gethsemane, looking at that deep water that God was asking Him to measure out and to follow God out into that water, Jesus said, if this cup can pass from me, He said, let it pass. He said, but not my will, but thy will be done. See, Christ waded out into that deep water that was deeper than his joy in life, that was deeper than his love for his mother. It was deeper than the passion that he had on people. He waded out into a water that overwhelmed him and actually killed him. But the problem with this water is everywhere it went, it brought life. <laughs> So on the third day, the water brought life into the Messiah and He rose again. Thank God, conquering death, hell, and the grave. You say, well, Brother Mark, how has this got to do with the New Testament? And how has this got to do with me? I'll tell you tonight that everything that happened to Ezekiel and everything that Ezekiel saw was not only a prophecy about the temple of God in that day, and to me, not only a prophecy about a coming Messiah, but it was a prophecy about Mark Mayo. See, for 19 years, I rode around the temple. You see, holiness to me is putting your beer down as you went by the church. Yeah, you don't drink when you ride by the church. See, I wasn't raised in church. I was raised wild as a buck. It didn't care who liked it. It didn't care who thought about it. Church was just for old people that were scared to die. That's what I thought. But you see, when I was 19... I went to a revival one night just to in spite of my friend and I sat down on the front bench and I thought, you know, I'm not scared of God and I hope He's not scared of me. And I just sat right there on the front bench with the rest of them and I just sat there and looked at them. I thought it was funny. I thought it was cute. And I was sitting there and there was 300 people that showed up at this revival. They moved it out of a church about this size. As a matter of fact, this church may be bigger than that church. It was the full gospel tabernacle in Walnut Grove, Alabama. They had a raging membership of about 15 people. And they had a revival one time. And they moved it out into the, into the yard. It, it started to grow. And the teenagers began to get saved and give their life to Christ. I'll get back to the water. Just hold on. And around uh, my, my friend had got saved, my best friend had got saved in a Baptist church and, and, and he about a month earlier and he had invited me to come to church and, and I told him, listen, that's good for you. That's great. I'm chasing girls and I like beer. I'm okay. You just go ahead and do your thing and I'll do mine. So I would pick him up. He didn't have a car. So I would pick him up on the weekends and me and him would go to Gadsden and chase girls. Don't know what we would do if we'd caught one of them, but we're chasing them anyway. You know, we ride up and down uh, a broad street and go around the mall, round and round, and walk up and down the mall. 
You know, if you see a pretty one, I duck. <laughs> don't look at her in the eye because I don't know what I'm going to do with her if I catch her. And, you know, and then I'd take him home. We were good boys. And when I would take him home, the switch would turn and then I'd go and just do what I wanted to. With whoever I wanted to and whenever I wanted to get home. But you see, there, I, as I sat there in this front chair, and it was just an old metal chair, I would get that 300 people sitting in a tent was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I was sitting there thinking, well, you know, how long is this going to last? There wasn't even anybody scheduled to preach that night. Some of the teenagers were going to give their testimony. And I sat there and I thought, well, how in the world? This is getting bored. I don't know what's going, what's going to take place now. They're going to pull out the snakes? And I sat there and, and, and the singing stopped. And I remember turning around. I'm on the front bit, on the front chair on the left-hand side and the singing stopped. And I turned around and looked at people. We're in a Pentecostal church. It don't ever stop. <laughs> and this is what I saw. People were singing, but I couldn't hear them. I couldn't hear anything audible through my ears, and I thought, this is weird. This is strange. I've had a stroke. Something is wrong with me. And then people started standing up. It must have been a good song. They were standing up, and they were just clapping, and I couldn't hear the sound of the clap. I couldn't hear the sound of, the vo of their voices or anything. And I heard something ask me. He said, do you want to go? And I answered well, like a 19-year-old would. No. I don't want to go. Listen, you want to get terror. And that's put me at 19 years old being the weird guy in high school or the weird guy going through Altoona and Warner Grove shaking my Bible at people or the guy running through or walking through the college corridors with my Bible in my hand saying, get saved, get saved. I said, no. No, I'm good. And I just sat there. I wasn't listening to anything because I couldn't hear anything. And then I heard a voice again saying, do you want to go? And my heart was beating out of my chest. And I had that lump in my throat and I had began to sweat. And I come up out of my chair just a little bit and I thought, yeah, wait a minute. Oh, Oh, only Christians I knew were my papa and granny. They wasn't a lot of fun. So I sat there for a few minutes and they singing and all this is going on. I mean, there's 300 people there. We're in a revival. It's a Pentecostal church. They're acting crazy. But yet I can't hear anything. And the last thing I knew, I heard, do you want to go? I fell down on my knees. There wasn't an altar. It was just grass. They had a little microphone stand standing up there. I don't know how I got there, but I got there. And I fell down on my knees, and I don't know what I said. But apparently, I got saved that night. And when I, they said when I stood up, I had a, I was black. I don't remember what happened. And he said they told me afterwards. The preacher said he said I want to talk to you a minute. I said okay. And he said, I want you to know, son, he said, that was one of the best sermons I've ever heard. To right up to the point, you said, I'm lost. And I said, did I say that? He said, yeah, you said that. And he said, that was right before you went to your knees. I thought tonight that churches, we look at Ezekiel and it's easy to see Christ in the Scripture about how He measured out a thousand cubits in Jesus and God was leading Him toward Calvary every time it was measured out. He was leading Him toward the cross because He was leading Him toward Easter Sunday morning the day that He would be resurrected victorious over death, hell, and the grave. But I want to show you Peter. That God called Peter out and said, Peter, follow me. And Peter stepped out ankle deep. Boy, this could be a long message. He stepped out an uh, uh, ankle deep. And he was thought he was something. He thought he was great and wonderful. And then one day Peter looked up and saw Jesus walking across the water. And Peter said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. Peter stepped out of a perfectly good boat. Measured a thousand cubits. And he stepped out a little deeper in God's grace. And he was doing good. So he got scared. 
there and you look back at the bank. You thought, well, this water, it's helped me, Lord, I'm sinking. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into all that I could, but I'm not. I want to tell you tonight, and I want to get to my main point about me and about you. At that point when I accepted Christ into my life, and at the point that you accepted Christ into your life, I believe that we were no longer standing on the bank. It's when I was lost is when I was standing on the bank. I got to see people testify. And I got to hear people tell me about God's grace. And I, and I got to hear people preach, maybe on television or this, that, and the other. But I didn't have any idea what they were experiencing. But the night that I got saved, the night that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I want you to know that I stepped out about ankle deep. And I want you to know that in my life, and down that way, that as God began to lead me to be a Sunday school teacher, I had to step out just a little bit further. When God began to call me to preach, I want you to know I stepped out. No, I didn't. I backed up. And I backed up for four years. I backed up. I, I went and talked to a lawyer about filing bankruptcy at that point. Uh, me and Patsy was ready to pack our clothes because we was on the verge of divorce. Because once you step out into God's grace and then you take a couple of steps back, I want to promise you it ain't a fun place to be. I thought tonight that church when I finally I broke down and announced my calling to preach and God let me step out just a little bit further out into the water. I want you to know my marriage was fine. My finances were fine. My family was fine because I was stepping out into a place of God's graces and of God's majesty that the Spirit of God might be working over through me that not in ankle deep, not knee deep, not this waist deep, but honey, sometimes you can get out there and swim in God's grace. Paul said it like this. Of all of the beauty and the, and the brilliance of Paul, Paul said this. He said, I met a man the other day. He said, now whether he was in the body or out of the body, he said, I don't know. Paul had got out there swimming in some mighty deep water to the point he didn't know whether he was talking to somebody in the flesh or talking to an angel. He didn't have any idea. John was on the island of Patmos over there, sent over there in exile, and something happened to where John had stepped out into some mighty deep water because if you read the book of Revelations, he was in a lot deeper water than I've ever been. Because he talks about some weird things, some really strange things that I still can't comprehend. <laughs> but he was in mighty deep water. I thought tonight, church, and I want to encourage you, you see, the thing about it is, a lot of people, most of us, I pray, everybody in here has accepted the Lord. I hope there's nobody standing on the bank wondering what the water feels like. Why don't y'all wish y'all had some water? <laughs> <laughs> I hope and pray that nobody's lost and undone looking from the outside in and going, why is she testifying? What are they singing about? You remember those days? When you didn't understand, you pick up a King James Bible and it was like written in Spanish. It didn't make any sense to you. It, and then you, you start accepting Christ's love and, and accepting grace and you start to understand. And you feel when somebody stands up and testifies, you feel something moving within you. He said, our spirit would bear witness one with another. Those ladies that sung last night, I sat on a pew and just cried like a baby. Because what they were singing about was stirring in me. These two young men come up here and blessed us tonight singing. And I didn't cry like a baby, but I just wanted to stand up and wave my arms. Because I knew what they were singing about. But I thought tonight that church, one of the most blessed things that we can do to be in God's inspiration and be in God's power is to, as a church, step out into a little deeper. You see, that's what revival's all about. The problem with it, I'm going to have to come out from right here. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. When I was a young man, we had a flood. My kids have heard this. I mean, it rained for about three, sta uh, three straight days. I mean, it rained. And the old Warrior River runs through Walnut Grove. And some of us teenage boys, we got the idea... My kids are the only ones in here. Guys, y'all don't try it. Y'all kind of young too. <laughs> All of us football players decided that we were going to see which one was the strongest. 
<clears throat> we were going to wade out into this raging river and see who could stand it. Now, I was a lineman, a huge monster at 170 pounds. And, you know, we had running backs and quarterbacks and tailbacks. There was about 12 of us. And I always had big thighs and big calves. And so we went out, two or three of them went out into the water and they, whoa, and they just got washed away. Well, you know, I got my chest poked out and I bowed up and I got out there about ankle deep and I thought, well, there's nothing to this. There's nothing to this, ankle deep water. And this is honest to God. I was lost as a goose, but God, give me this. I was dumb enough to do it. And I walked out, there was a bridge, and the closer you got to the bridge, for some reason, the deeper it got. And I was up on that sandbar, and the water was just rolling. And I went out there just a little bit deeper, and as you go out there a little deeper, you know, it pushes against you. And you can't turn sideways, you've got to turn toward the current. And the water hit me in the knees, well, it was pushing me a little bit. So I stood there for a few minutes and some of them was laughing, some of them was giggling, you know, and calling me a coward. And so I walked on out there to waist deep water. And when you get in waist deep water, you got to put that foot way back here to be able to stand in it. And then I got to the point where you might as well bite the bullet. I just went on out there in chest deep water and I was standing there and that river was hitting me. I can take you right to the spot. It was hitting me and my muscles began to quiver and my body began to quiver and it was pushing me. And finally I just let go. I couldn't hold it anymore. You see, we as Christians, what's that have to do with us as Christians? You see, I can be saved and be a child of God and be in ankle deep water and guess what? I'm a lot more in control than God is. If God's only got my feet down, I'm in there, no pressure. But when I step out into knee deep water, God starts pushing on me just a little bit. And as we step out into waist deep water, God owns more of us than we do. And God starts telling us, you need to teach. You, you need to preach. You, you need to testify. You need to go pray. And that pushing against us, what we do. Let's go back up here to knee deep water. That's a lot more comfortable. But church, I want to tell you something. In order to get into God's graces, you can't live out there in that swimming water. But I'll tell you what, if you don't get to go out there every once in a while, you miss a blessing. That there's times in our lives when we just need to be immersed in the grace of God and just swim in His mercy and to feel His arms and His presence all around us. It's okay to wait around there in knee deep water every once in a while. Everybody needs a break. But it's when we wait out there and say, God, here am I. Have you ever just floated? My mom, I'll get up here before I get in trouble. <laughs> My mother passed away in uh, March of this year. And I've done her funeral. Mother had a unique ability that I used to want when I was a kid. We would work all day in the field picking beans and stuff when I was little. And we'd always go over to Aurora Lake and take a bath, kind of, or swim, whatever you want to call it. She wouldn't let us in the house like that. <laughs> Mother could get out there and put her feet up and lay back and absolutely go to sleep. Floating. And I'd get out there and I'd try to lay beside her and my feet would just sink every time. And that made me so mad because I stiff with my legs. I do everything I could. And Mama, she'd go to sleep. And when we got ready to go, we would have to holler at her. And there she would. She, she'd pop her head up. Here she come, swimming back. Church, I'm going to tell you something tonight. If you're lost and you're standing on a bank and you don't understand what it means to, to wade out into the grace of God, I want to encourage you to take a step. Because God will lead you into that. If you've been a Christian a while, but you're still hanging around in ankle deep water, reach out and grab God's hand and let Him pull you out just a little bit further. If you've been in it for a long time, but you've never been over knee deep, I want to tell you something. There's joy unspeakable when you get in a little deep water. If you get scared, you can always back up just a little bit. But I want to tell you something. The full joy of being a Christian 
is when you get to swim every once in a while in the grace of God. Those 12 young men that Christ picked out, they endured. They stepped forward and stepped back. They stepped forward and stepped back. And then Peter in the book of Acts, he stood up. And he said, men and women, he said, this is this Christ that you crucified. And they said, what was, must we do? And he said, repent. And it said they had all things in common. Sharing and breaking bread from house to house. And God added 3,000 souls to the church. They got in some deep water. I'm going to say this. I'm going to hush. Let me encourage you. Don't just reach out for God's hand when you think death is near. Don't just reach out for God's hand when somebody's sick or you're in trouble. Reach out for God's hand and say, Father, lead me out into your grace that I may be in your presence deeper than what I am right now. I promise you, it gets scary. But when you can float in God's grace, it is amazing.
Father, I thank you tonight for Mark again, for his ministry, for his family. Thank you for this church and for these that have come this way tonight, for the other churches and members of other churches that have been here, for the songs that we've enjoyed, the, the privilege we've had of being in your presence. We go out from this place now. We pray we've changed. We pray we're not the same. That we will be in deeper water when we go out mm -hmm. from here than when we came in here. Let me so. Let me so. Go with these now. Lord, we go to a time of fellowship with food and, and laughter and friendship. We do it in your name. We pray that you would bless this food that's been prepared tonight. As we partake of it, that you would bless us in your service. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, help us to remember those that we are on our prayer list, those who are on our hearts and on our minds that we pray for tonight. Help us to remember always that we need to step out, to get in a little deeper, to enjoy the, the blessings that you can give. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Food is this way. Yes, I want to know before I go.